Hello everyone and welcome to another episode from the Hermitcraft Season 10 server. Today guys, we are crashing into our firework because I uh... <laughs> what are the odds of us hitting this two... It's like two blocks wide, three blocks wide. What are the odds of us hitting that? But yeah, if we were a little higher obviously we'd hit the big firework, but hitting the trail? Insanely unlikely. Anyways, we're starting off today here at Kaboom Fireworks. And we got to restock some fireworks here because we've been making some sales. So we're going to get out some of these here. We got some small light blue flight duration three, which are going to go right in there. Very good. We got some orange going to go in here. And then we got some yellow going to go in here. Got to be careful these go in the right spots. But yeah, we're going to basically restock our shops here. See if we made any diamonds and just check in with them. See how, it, how it's going. All right, guys, so we've made a total of zero diamonds today at the shop, but I want to show you guys something. I don't think I showed this yet, but uh, we are actually now selling bundles of fireworks. So these bundles are all flight duration one premium bundles with various colors, shapes, and effects. Uh, we have also flight duration two bundles, flight duration three bundles up here. And so these all have, if I just get these out, you can see sort of a nice variety of colors and shapes and... Yeah, some of them have trails, like this one has two trails there, so... If people are looking for a variety of fireworks, like just in a small package, these are available. Three diamonds per bundle now. Um, so yeah, pretty good deal there. Also, we're selling uh, crossbow fireworks with a free crossbow for every purchase of a... Uh, basically a stack of firework rockets, which are only one diamond per stack. That's a lot of gunpowder going into these rockets here. Uh, and they do a lot of damage. They do like five hearts of damage uh, per firework. So this is uh, a pretty good deal. All these uh, crossbows as well have multi-shots. So you actually get like triple the fireworks for one diamond. So let the other hermits know uh, that that is the case. Up here we just have a few extra multi-breakers, but nothing much. Got some more fireworks restocked there. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we can see more sales here soon. But now it's on to the goat horn shop. Goat horn shop, show me something. Come on, baby, let's see it. Oh, yeah, let's go. All right, sweet. So we made 18, 27, 36. This is like, what, 40-some diamonds? 45 diamonds. We'll take it. Beautiful. We got even more in here. I believe we sold two from here. No, three from here. We had these other two in here as sort of uh, diamonds that were already there. Nice. We got some here. All right. All right, and we got two over here. So we had a total of, I think, five. So maybe this is actually an extra one that we had in there. We'll just keep that in there for now. Beautiful. All right, so we ended up with a total of, wait for it, 64 and 8 is 72. 72 diamonds from the horn shop. Fantastic. Great day at the horn shop today. And we also need to pretty soon make the horn of the month for September. Got to get that one going. I think I got a good a good pop culture one ready. So, yeah, be looking for that probably in the next episode. So, that's great. Let's quickly run over to the glass collective over here. See if we sold any glass here. Yes, we have. All right. Two diamonds here. And that's it for the white stained glass. Let's jump over this way. Any light gray selling? No light gray selling. Okay, so just two diamonds here. Let's add it up, see what we're at. So guys, we've checked all of our shops, and we ended up with a grand total of 70, I think, 4 diamonds. So our total now is at 2,583 diamonds for this season. Uh, and that's just with these three shops. We actually have three more shops that we need to make uh, probably sometime soon. We have an amethyst shop, we have the amethyst permit, we have the gilded blackstone permit, and I believe we also have the nilium permit for Warped and Crimson Nilium. So we actually have to get those permits, uh, we have to make shops for those permits soon because it might not be too long where we might start redistributing some permits throughout the world. Like if people don't use their permits, they might just lose it. So that might be something we have to do soon. But for now, we're gonna head on back to the base. We got a lot to do there today. Welcome back to the fireworks factory, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, speaking of the fireworks factory, we actually have a custom order from Isuma that we are going to be fulfilling here. Uh, we're going to put this in... We'll put this in the front slot here. Uh, we're just giving him a couple of fireworks of orange and lime uh, for his Mace Race minigame, which we might play later on, uh, depending on if uh, we can find somebody to play with. But 
This is going to Mr. Isuma. So we need to get our Isuma stamp out. We're actually out of Isuma stamps after this, but we're going to send this off. And hopefully, yeah, that reaches Isuma. Uh, so that's great. And in terms of our actual mail, we have, yes, some new stuff. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Uh, Frog Key, free entry to Ravager Rush. Frog Light Shop is now open. Frog Key or one diamond lets you play Ravager Rush. Very good. We have Frog Coins exchanged for four Frog Lights. Nice, 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 nice. So this is Ethos Shop in the Shopping District. Brand new shop with the mini game attached. Uh, you know what? We might as well go over there and give it a play because it's a really fun game. I've played four times already and it's also quite tough. It's also quite a difficult thing. Uh, and also... Flying is a difficult thing for good times with Scar at times. So let's head over to Ethos Frogger, or I guess it's more accurately called Ravager Rush. So let's head over there, see what it's about. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ravager's Rush. Not to be confused with Ravager's Run, which was our game from Season 6, uh, where we had Ravagers running around a city. Uh, and you had to go to different buildings in the city to gather stuff. This is totally different than that. This is, ra this is basically Frogger in Minecraft. Um, so... The way we play this, we put the frog key or diamond in the pot, go through the door, fall down, set spawn, don't punch ravagers, and try to reach the five gates at the end of the level. That's the main thing. Reach the five gates at the end of the level, and after each gate, uh, after you get to the end, if you get to the end, uh, all five gates will uh, close one after the other, and then uh, open again after that. Uh, and you have, I think, five lives, I want to say, and your score depends on how much time it takes you to reach the gate. And then you get coins based on your final score. So you can actually win coins to get, like, the uh, frog coins, which we got some of for free in here as, like, a promotional thing. So that's great. Uh, so, yeah, this is also a shop, I believe. So I think if we actually... Hang on. First of all, let's come down here. Yeah, I need I need some of these green ones, I think. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah, so Verdant Frog Light. One diamond is 24. One frog coin is four. So if I put in... One of these. Hey, there's our frog light. Let's put in a few more. Let's put in let's put in two more. We're actually gonna need quite a few of these, so just gonna purchase quite a bit. One, two, three, four, five. So we should get another twenty or so. Nice, we take it. We take it. Perfect. Alright, so we're actually gonna need these frog lights, so I'm gonna put these in here for now. But we got our frog key, and what are we playing for? You might ask. Check this out. Etho has made um, probably the most adorable championship trophy, Frog Champ. <laughs> and it's just this little frog with these giant eyes, mouth open. It looks adorable. So this is the trophy you get if you win uh, each month uh, at this uh, at this at this game, at this Ravagers uh, Rush game. So uh, right, I've already actually played this a few times. It's very very difficult. Um, I think the top scores are here. Yeah, Joel 17, beat up 16, Tango 14, Cub 5, Gem 4. So, uh, it's a tough game. We're going to have to focus up here. We're going to have to lock in. Uh, I'm actually, I like to just take all my stuff off before I go in, so that way I don't have to pick up stuff inside of the uh, game. So, I'm just going to do that now. Bada bing, bada boom. Technically, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, I just like to have it all there. All right, so... Here's our free play. Let's do this thing. He's also got the scores up here. Yeah, there's us over there with five. Jim with four. I think he's going to have all the top scores around here. So that's going to be great. Let's do it. Ravager Rush by Mr. Etho. He's got some music choices here. We're going to keep the music on for this. Right-click bed to set spawn. Your items are auto-collected. Let's go. We're actually going to lose levels, but that's okay. We got an XP farm in our base. Just click the bed, so our spawn is set. Very good. Alright, so here we go. Here we go. Alright, we gotta focus, though. Okay, so we wanna go after the Ravagers. Okay. That guy passes. Oh, where did this guy come from? Oh my goodness. Alright, 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 alright. Okay, we're going. There's, they went past. They went past. Over here. Oh, jump. 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 Okay, we made it halfway. We made it halfway. No, no. Please. Please. 
Please, so close! I can feel it! Oh my gosh, comb over extreme. Come on now. Why are you doing me like that? Okay. This is surprisingly intense. All right, we're gonna wait for the next Ravager. There he goes. Okay, this guy just went, so we're going again this way. Going again this way. Make it, make it, make it, make it, make it. Okay. Okay, right, that guy just went. That guy's there. Back up. Go forward, go forward, go forward. Yes, we made it. Let's go. All right, that's one down. We made it. That is one success, so that gate will now be closed. So if that's the case, let's get over here. You can see we got three lives. Our score is four right now. Timer is going down, so let's go here. That guy goes. That guy goes. Please. Oh, Sunday Driver. Okay. I think that guy was the Ravager. Came out right as we went by. Okay, so that guy goes. This guy goes. Man, I think that might be the last one. Might have one more life, maybe? Last life, okay. Let's try going this way on the side. So here, he's going, he's going, he's going. Okay, we gotta send it, we gotta send it. Oh, inadequate plumbing, okay, that's it. Well, we made it across once, so sad. All right, all right. Well, there we go. We only got four. <laughs> We got a bit to be desired there. I don't think we had anything. I know we had four, four points for so for, for, uh, frog coins. But at least we can put these to good use. We are gonna need a few frog lights, so we're gonna actually come out here. One, two, three, four. We should get 16. Yeah, there we go. Four frog lights apiece, there we go. All right, so only a score of four. I think our score comes up here now. Yep, there it is. So yeah. Didn't surpass our score of five I had last time, so we got to uh, we got some work to do, catching up to some of the other high scores. By the way, we really did need these frog lights because we need to basically put down some lighting behind our honey and honeycomb farms back here. Pretty sure, yep, it runs out over here, so we can just dive in here. I've meaning to do this for quite some time, but just have not had an excuse to do it, so I figured why not now? So we just got to bring this lighting all the way down here, all the way over, and are we going to make it? Yes, we are. Very good. Okay. Sweet. We need one more piece of sculpt there, but otherwise that lighting is now complete all the way around the honey and honeycomb farm. So guys, let's talk about what we're going to do today at the base. Well, let's just quickly launch high above the base. You guys get a good view of what it's looking like. Uh, you can see we've now put down a few more amethyst uh, crystal like volcanic dike type things around here. This one sort of comes this way and comes behind the firework factory here. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of skulk placement. We're going to basically expand the borders of our base so that we basically want to more or less double the size. So we're talking about like skulk coming out to here, coming along this way and basically filling out the whole area you see around here that I've cleared of trees. Uh, that I think will give it a much more grandiose feeling, including like going up the side of this hill, and also allow us to expand our crystal uh, construction operations uh, so that we can fit in uh, more giant crystals everywhere and add a little bit more color to the area. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this area is looking a little bit more rarefied, a little bit more skulkified, and yeah, without the skulk veins on it to provide a little bit of texturing, it actually looks quite ominous and quite dark compared to the area we've put down with the uh, the crystals here. Like if I just get over here, you can see it looks like darkness in the background, which is kind of cool too. Uh, we want to actually expand this even further, but we've run out of skulk now. 
uh, for this project. Uh, and yeah, we now have a shulker box almost entirely of dirt. Uh, so we're just going to quickly fill this up. We're going to store this in there. And we're going to, I think, now go to Ren Dog's shop because Ren is actually selling Skulk uh, this season. He has the Skulk permit, so let's just drop on in, blast on out, and then coast on over to the shopping district. And by coast on over, I mean that in the best possible way, using absolutely zero rockets to make it here. And there's Ren's beacon shop, and just beyond Etho's frogger, we have the giant crane, and this area here, made of pods that Ren has put together, and I think one of these, I think it's this one over here, yes, this one has skulk veins, which we've already, we've already bought him out of these skulk veins, so, <laughs> we actually going to have to gather some of those ourselves, or, you know, tell Ren to restock, uh, this one though, yes, one diamond per stack for skulk, and he has a couple of... Yeah, shulker box, there's only two shulk, one shulker box plus of skulk. But, you know what? We will take his entire stock. So we'll grab our diamonds here, and we will pay one diamond per stack for this skulk. So we're just going to take out an entire shulker box here, more or less. Uh, and then I guess we'll just fill this up with some diamonds. There you are, Mr. Ren. And then we have this guy, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, there we have it. And that is all of the skulk that I believe Ren has in this entire shop. So we got to let him know we've now <laughs> bought all the skulk and we're going to need like tens of thousands of blocks more. So he's got to get stocking, baby. He's got to get stocking. So anyways... Let's put this stuff away, head on back to the base. So during the live stream, we actually placed down all the skulk that we got from Mr. Rendog, and to nobody's surprise, that was nowhere near enough uh, for what we need. So that meant we have to go and gather skulk ourselves, and to do so, we are gonna try and locate an ancient city. Luckily, I remembered down an old tunnel of mine, there was some deep dark, and we used that and the sort of cross mining strategy that you can use to find ancient cities and we found an ancient city and from there it was just a matter of going through and clearing out the skulk shriekers to prevent the warden from spawning and of course we're a pro so we use wool basically everywhere in the ancient city to clear out all the, the shriekers that could possibly summon the warden in fact while clearing out this whole ancient city i didn't see a single warden at any time i think we got hit with two shriekers which i didn't expect but you know, it takes four to summon the warden in under 10 minutes, uh, like separated under 10 minutes. So it was pretty straightforward to get rid of the shriekers. And after doing that, it's basically you have free reign over the ancient city because hostile mobs don't spawn there whatsoever. Uh, and so then we could just blast through with our hoe, gathering all sorts of skulk and skulk veins and skulk catalysts, skulk shriekers and the sensors as well. Plus you find a lot of diamonds underneath the skulk. Uh, so it's actually a decent source of uh, diamond ore if you're looking for that as well. So in total from the ancient city, we ended up gathering about 11 shulker boxes of skulk blocks, as well as six and a half shulker boxes of skulk veins, which the discrepancy in blocks versus veins is because in natural generation uh, in the ancient city, the skulk vein cannot form on the skulk block. Uh, so there's just more skulk blocks than there are skulk veins in general. Uh, but regardless, we've got a bunch of blocks, so we're ready to go. Uh, so that means we're going to be replacing the ground. Now, the way I like to do this, I like to basically outline the changes in terrain when I want to keep the terrain shape, but just replace it. Uh, so you can see here I'm making outlines of Skulk wherever the terrain changes in elevation. And then once I have that outlined, I go through and remove the inside of the outline and then simply place down the block I'm replacing uh, on the inside of the outline. It just makes it simpler. You don't really have to uh, think too much about, you know, how I'm going to replace this or, you know, have to worry about certain sections because you've outlined the entire thing already and then you can just, you know, blindly, you know, go through and clear it out and then place it down all at once. There's no excessive tool switching or anything like that. So I find it's a nice technique 
and I think it saves quite a bit of time. Welcome back everybody, and as you can see here, we are spreading the Skulk a bit here near our base, expanding our base region a little bit, and Skulkifying things around here so we can add more crystals and more geologic things in the future. Uh, you can see we've done, we've made quite a bit of significant progress. If I fly around here, uh, you'll see I'll do like a small little lap here. We sort of outlined a lot of the areas so that we have like these little terraces of Skulk uh, and the borders of Skulk the Skulkified area uh, already. Uh, but as I was doing this and going around here and placing down all this, you see we have more filled in in this section now uh, as well. But as I was doing this, I was realizing this is not going to work because the scale I'm looking for is a little bit bigger than what we currently have here. And I also realized that things like the Skulk, which I had planned to stop here with, was not going to encompass things like the Astrodillo area over here, where we sent the Astro, Astrodillo to space. Uh, so we need to incorporate some of those things, and so we got to expand this skulk out here even further, which I have not yet done. Um, so, yeah, I figured if we're doing that, then, you know, we might as well expand it to include the top of the hill, right, with these villagers up here, because I want to eventually get, like, a... A nice villager area in this area like this place uh, and these guys have just been sort of sitting here and this whole mountaintop has been kind of neglected by me uh, it has been helpful for you know Cleo has taken it for her villagers down there but it'd be nice to like incorporate this properly into the base a little bit or at least have an area you know on the top of the mountain which you know sort of uh, since it's so close to our area like fits in with the area so I figured we might as well expand it like to here which is like minus 650 or so. So if we came out to here, right, then we'd, we could incorporate some of the top of the mountain stuff. Uh, maybe put like a little tower up here with these villagers. Uh, and then I figured if we're doing that, then we also got to sort of worry about the front because we're going to have this skulk area over here that's going all the way out to the mountain. It's going to be weird if we have like this skulk enclave that like shoots out over here but doesn't, you know... Uh, keep the base in more or less the center. So then I figured we got to expand in the front a bit. And I think like maybe this line or so would be enough to keep the base sort of centered in the skulk. Uh, and also like it sort of aligns with the river a little bit too. Um, and I want to add like some jagged cliffs down here to sort of uh, not to have just skulk, but also, you know, have some like nice like... Uh, uh, environmental design around here so i think like cliffs jagged cliffs of maybe like blackstone and deep slate and uh tough and things like that could look really really cool here so i think something like that would be cool and this is i think it's further far enough back to sort of like set that up with the the skulk you know coming around a little bit uh and then i thought you know okay if we have that sort of like figured out what about the back side and i realized you know if we get back here to the back and you can see we filled in some some area here with some skulk terraces which eventually will be pure skulk but in the back here we have this little enclave already which sort of comes back here all the way back here and then it sort of comes in this way and i was like well you can't have that so now i'm planning to basically bring the skulk all the way back to basically the base of this mountain here conveniently somebody i think a long time ago placed down a bunch of cobblestone going up here <laughs> somebody traveled this path so like roughly this point here uh is about where i'm gonna go to back here so that we can have uh not only like set back the the factory a little bit and the the main base area but also we want it to sort of we want the skulk to sort of look like it's spreading uphill as well like not only up this mountain but the mountains in the back as well and right now it doesn't really look like that so if we get back here you can see it's just skulk and then boom trees again like what come on can't have that can't have that so basically what i'm trying to say is we're massively expanding the base or planning to massively expand the base while having already expanded the base massively <laughs> so we're doing an expansion on top of an expansion so with that that is going to be it for me today guys massively expanded the base today and an even larger expansion coming in the near future. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye. <laughs>